Howard has uh, Ruben just kind of picked up where where he left off as far as last time he saw him on the practice field. He's got fresh legs. Uh, he looks fast. Um, so we're excited to have him back. Love his energy. What, what were you guys able to do with him? What was he staying on it mentally through the time he was away? Uh, whatever the NFL allowed us to. Um, I know he wasn't allowed at practice. It, to be honest with you, we were, uh, personally and with the linebackers coach, we were so consumed with trying to make sure that we had the rest of the group ready to play. Um, to be honest with you, he was here in the building doing his conditioning and whatever he was allowed to do. But uh, as far as football stuff, there wasn't as much interaction. He was able to go to meetings. Yeah, he went to meetings and all that stuff. But there was no, we, we weren't allowed the one-on-one uh, stuff. So. You've talked about the missed tackles and, and what you do in practice fundamentally, but how much work goes into, or how much have you emphasized taking correct angles and, and not just the physical act of tackling, but the, the mental side of it? The, the, number one, uh, the, the number one key, the first step we teach in our tackling uh, technique is angles, tracking the narrow hip, eliminating the cutback lane. And so uh, tracking, uh, that's our term for it, is by far the most number one uh, aspect of tackling. If you do not take good tracking uh, angles, you cannot be violent when you arrive. So it's uh, so everything starts with tracking, taking correct angles, and then from there at contact, it's wrap, squeeze, and drive drive your legs for five. So there's stuff that um, is showing up on tape that we're going to continue to work through with drills, uh, especially today since we're padded. But uh, it's it's got to get better. Is Ruben in terms of tracking and, and those angles? Is he probably your best defender when it comes to that? Um, I'd say AC would probably be uh, one of our best tracking players out of the middle of the field. Uh, but Ruben is very good. Um, but that's one of AC's greatest strengths is his ability to track out of the middle field. Is that something that we should expect from fans that Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> we we get, get paid a lot of, lot of money to be uh, good fundamental football players. So absolutely. I was just going to say in the beginning of the season that, that tackling might not be as good as it is towards mm -hmm. the end because you're not doing a lot of it in, in the preseason. No. Uh, we rep it. We drill it. Even without pads, the, the, all the tracking angles, because that's the number one emphasis. When you, when you don't have pads, the only thing you can do is tra uh, work on your tracking angles. So uh, there, there is no leeway on that one. There's, there's no uh, excuse and there's no exception. We've got to get better and be better at tackling. How's the Kelo responded this week? practice. Akello uh, came out uh, strong mentally, uh, like he always does. And uh, I'm excited to see him work throughout the rest of the week, for sure. The guy has a tough game. Did you pull him aside when he has this, you know, obviously it wasn't the game he wanted uh, today, or is, did you just expect to know that he'll be able to respond? How do, you, how do you handle this approach? There's a lot of young guys on this defense, and so there's going to be peaks and valleys uh, with all of them. And, um, and with a guy like Akello, obviously, he's uh, they're going to face adversity, and how they bounce back from adversity will will define them for the rest of their future and uh, uh, or their career. So you do talk to them, but it's I don't want to say it's expected, but at the same time, it's being able to push, especially at the corner position. You got to let the last play go. You got to move on to the next one. And and I think Akello is really good at that. He's got a strong mind. He's ready to work, and he's um, and he's built the right way. Will he start on Sunday? Uh, we'll see as the week goes on. I, uh, healthy enough, I, I, I don't know. It just it depends on how healthy and all that stuff. So there's a lot of work to go through for the rest of this week to, to see where he's at before I could even guess on that question. Have you considered rolling Colbert over to his side and giving him a little help? Or is that a, an accommodation you don't want to make? You, you know, it's uh, it, th that's always tough just because of the, the way the structure of our defense works. Um, there's other ways that we can we can help corners. Uh, along with the middle third, third safety, but anytime you have to overcompensate, you're opening up another hole, especially in zone defense. So, um, the Akello has been rock solid, and uh, for for the most part, he just it wasn't his best game. And uh, but he's not a guy I worry about. I don't think any of us worry about out on the uh, out on the edge, to be honest with you. So, he's got to get back to. To, what, uh, to his fundamentals and continue to work and, and understand exactly the way teams are attacking him. And he's just got to continue to get better. But there are ways to help a corner, uh, not just with the strong safety. I, I wouldn't oh, expect, uh, free safety, I'm sorry. I wouldn't expect you to tell us who would be starting. But if Chikwaski can't go, how, how do you make that determination? And how much of that is matchup based based on what the Chiefs have to do? Uh, again, there's Exum getting his reps. And uh, uh, of course, uh, Tyvis getting his reps. DJ Reed uh, can also get reps in there. So 
Uh, again, that's another uh, area where we're working through it to make sure that we can put the best player forward. And, uh, and so there's three guys working in that spot uh, while uh, JT's not uh, practicing. Do you have a sense of what his availability could be this, this week in practice? Mm -hmm. I don't. And Jim stays at corner. Correct. You say Tyvis was getting the... Yeah, I, there's only so many people on the on the football team, so to make sure that we get 11 people, so you got your uh, different players getting getting reps. So, Richard Sherman said post game that you called a great game. What goes into calling plays from a defensive standpoint? I think it's it's easy to see if if an offensive play caller is rolling and, and it really has things going. But for you, when do you know that you're kind of in a rhythm and have your finger on the the pulse of a game? Uh, really, it's from a. Uh, uh, you're hitting on run pass, and uh, you're you're in a, a run you're in run coverage or run fronts when it's run, and you're in pass coverage, pass fronts when it's pass, and uh, just the overall um, hitting pressures when you want to hit pressures. It's that's that's basically it for a, from a defensive coordinator standpoint. But uh, um, I wish I could have had a couple plays back. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I appreciate what Sherm said, but I, I always look to myself too. So. With that, how much is the risk if you if you guess wrong? I mean, is the, the scheme good enough to where I mean, yeah, you, you can no, overcome that if it's a run front, but it's a pass play. I mean, it's not like a every a scheme in the NFL. Number. You're you're never going to be perfect, yeah. you're, uh, especially on defense. So you you rely on fundamentals and technique, uh, being disciplined with your eyes, being disciplined in your uh, uh, your area of the field. If you're a zone defender, being disciplined as a man defender. Um, but you. You're you're never 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 100. You're never even close to 100 uh, percent from a defensive standpoint. But uh, but you rely on the fundamental teachings that you have and guys knowing exactly what you need to need to get done. So if they're overloaded as a as a to be honest with you guys in our scheme as a coach, if there's guys running around open and nobody knows who that play belongs to, that to me is the worst thing you can do as a football coach to a player to leave them out there without understanding exactly what they're supposed to do. So when you've got guys flying around wide open, um, obviously there's a miscommunication somewhere, and that is the biggest onus we take as, as coaches. Sorry, one more. Uh, Shirma, also, I just, we as players have to do our jobs. I mean, wh what's the hardest part that goes into that? Is it processing information? Is it diagnosing what you're seeing in front of you? I mean, what, what gets in the way of, of doing your job? Trust. Trust. Uh, feeling like you need to do more uh, to compensate for something else. And if everyone just does their job and does it the best way they know how, you trust that the man next to you is doing the same, uh, things will just naturally fall in place. So um, there's a lot of things that, ha uh, that have to happen to break down, a, to break down on defense uh, for a really bad play to happen. Um, and usually when you go back and look at the tape, it was either poor footwork, uh, misalignment, uh, poor eyes, it was something fundamentally, uh, especially in our scheme. Uh, very, very rarely is it because someone just flat out busted. Uh, it's always going to go back to their, uh, back to technique and uh, discipline. What's the toughest thing about facing Andy Reid for you as a defensive coordinator? You know they do a lot of stuff. Uh, they they mess with your eyes. They've got a lot of different jet sweeps and movement, and uh, they've got a, a very good vertical pass game. Uh, they've got a good run game. So. Uh, you never know what they're going to do when they break the huddle. And you've got to be ready, uh, basically ready for everything. And so your rules got to be sound. Uh, it's got to be simple for the players. And they've got to be ready. They've got to be able to go as fast as possible. So uh, the great thing about our scheme is that we feel like we'll be ready for everything that they can throw at us. And it's just a matter of lining up and going out and playing. Uh, how much of what they've done these first few weeks is, is different than what they did last year with, with Alex Smith, the quarterback? You know, I don't. Um, they're always going to have wrinkles. That's the other part with with Coach Reed. He's got. He's going to have tons of wrinkles in, in his uh, in his style. They're always going to have something new. They're always going to have formations that play off each other, and uh, and you've got to, as a football player and as a coach, you've got to be aware of what you're putting on tape and what he can expose you at. So, um, I don't. I don't know if it's much different. It's a continuation. They've got little. They've got little wrinkles to their scheme that make it that make them very difficult. The Steelers players commented they they maybe underestimated Mahomes as far as his mental ability given his inexperience. Are there things where that shines on tape as far as him being able to process or whatever it is? 
Yeah, he look he looks fantastic. I mean, he looks really good. He's got a hose for an arm. Uh, there's a play in preseason where he, I think he threw it like 75 yards uh, to Tyreek against Atlanta. Um, if uh, if he can stay alive in the pocket, every ball on the football field is live. So uh, every receiver is still alive, no matter how long or how far the uh, the receiver is downfield. But uh, his ability to process coverage and uh, uh, go through his progressions and make throws has been pretty impressive. So. Uh, He's not being underestimated. Um, I know Coach uh, Shanahan has, uh, was um, very, very uh, high on him coming out in the, uh, the whole draft process. So there's, uh, there's a tremendous respect for him in this building, for sure. With what you know about Fred Warner, what you've seen from him, and combined with what you know about uh, Reuben Foster, what kind of upside and how do they complement each other if, if they were to be on the field together at some point? You know, the, between Fred, Malcolm, Ruben, they all possess great speed. Uh, they all possess the ability to communicate, and they all possess the ability. Uh, they're, they're very smart. They're very instinctual. So uh, with all three of those guys, um, you, you've got a really good combination of speed, instincts, and communication. Uh, and that's all you really could ask for out of that linebacker spot, especially, and not to mention their physicality. So uh, it's a good problem to have. We've got three really good ones, along with Elijah Lee, who had a really good game last week. Uh, and uh, Mark and Zacha had a, uh, a good game, and he's been he's been very good. So we've got we've got good depth right now with those guys coming back at uh, at that linebacker spot. Would you like to see all three of Foster, Warner, and Smith on the field together at some point? We'll see. That that all depends. It's the same thing. We're going to dress our best eleven, however it fits out. So uh, it could be uh, it could be whatever. Saying Malcolm is going to be the Sam is not as easy because the Sam is totally different than the Mike and the Will. And uh, that, that would be, that's hard. So um, we're going to evaluate everything we can to see how we can get our best 11 on the field and, and see how it plays Has out. Has played that position before? A long time ago, a long time ago. Robert, there was a, a play, uh, Kyle was asked about where Marvin Jones, uh, Elijah was covering Marvin Jones deep. Uh, and he's, Kyle said, there's a play about hook zones, which of course I know all about. But anyway, <laughs> he, uh, he was saying, you know, that wasn't a bust. That was de- that's just part of the uh, defense. Yeah. Can you explain why that is? Because, you know, to the casual fan, that looks like a mismatch. No, it, um, so it could happen. Uh, with our scheme, uh, it's, and it's very clear on tape for, for the league, so I'm not, I'm not keeping a secret here, but... Uh, in our scheme, sometimes a linebacker can get matched up on a wide receiver on that on that deep over route. That's uh, very well known within our scheme, and and uh, we do things to try to minimize the amount of times that that can happen. But at the same time, that's why you have guys who can run like Ruben, like Malcolm, like Fred, and Elijah for that matter. Uh, Elijah actually had a, a misstep on that one. That's why it looked like he was trailing uh, by so much. Um, but you guys have seen it throughout the preseason where. Uh, Ruben made that dive and play on Tavon Austin uh, in the preseason against Dallas. That that's his man. And even though it was a great play, my argument was that he was completely late on his read, and that's why he made it made a spectacular play when it was actually a poor play. Uh, later on in uh, preseason, he he gets him all the time, and he gloves it up like it's nothing, so no one really sees it. The only time it's ever really seen is when it's like, oh my gosh, that could have been a touchdown, or oh my gosh, what a great play. Um, but about 10 times a game, they're matched up that way. And once every four games, you'll, you'll see it and be like, well, that's a mismatch because it looked funny. But uh, it happens all the time in the game. And, uh, but for the most part, it, it just goes away from the naked eye because nine out of 10 times, it's really not a problem. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thanks, everybody.